everyone, including your good self. On this November 28th, we continue through this section of Space for Grace that's uh, discussing the Holy Spirit, walking by the Spirit. And today, it's resting in the Spirit, finding our rest. Now, where does the Spirit find his true resting place? Well, we're going to consider very, very briefly five different aspects, five different places the Spirit may or may not choose to rest. First of all, in creation? Well, the Net Bible, New International Translation, says in Genesis 1-2, the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the water. The footnote, it adds, the Hebrew verb has been translated hovering or moving as a bird over her young. See Deuteronomy 32 verse 11, which we can do in our own time. See, there was nowhere for the hovering spirit to, as it were, perch at that time. No perfect landing place, although the spirit was very active indeed. Moving on to Noah's Ark. We read in Genesis 8 verse 9 that the dove could not find a resting place, so it returned to the ark. Now the ark, according to 1 Peter 3, pictures Christ who protects us from the waters of judgment. Now here, Christ is the resting place. The Holy Spirit found the resting place in Christ. Thirdly, the Ark of the Covenant. Do you recall how the Ark of the Covenant, that box overlaid with gold, the angelic representations on top, and between it was the light called the Shekinah or Shekinah light, representing God's glory. So there the Spirit shone. Again, Jesus Christ is the propitiatory cover of the ark. When the spirit lands, it perches on Christ. We'll see this yes again in our third aspect, Jesus himself. When Gabriel told Mary that the spirit would overshadow her, she was overjoyed in the Lord. So the Holy Spirit would overshadow so the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory remember that from john 1 verse 14. so the wording reminds us of the shekinah glory especially when jesus was baptized you remember the dove in the that came down upon him representing the holy spirit and so he received the spirit resting on him and in him and today and for since first christians at pentecost the holy spirit at that time and still rests upon believers christians as the temple of god are indwelt by the spirit of god okay that that's very quickly touching on five points let's wrap it in wrap it together the spirit only rests on and dwells in a sinless man in Christ. However, because the elect are in Christ, they have Christ's spirit dwelling in them. So, for example, in Colossians 1 verse 27, we started with the Net Bible, so I'll just continue uh, with that verse 27 God wanted to make known to them the glorious riches of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you the hope of glory and similarly Romans chapter 8 verse 9 informs us you however are not in the flesh but in the spirit 
if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, of Christ, this person does not belong to him. So we must cease striving in the energy of the flesh, relying on our own abilities and efforts, which inevitably produce the works of the flesh. Going to Galatians 5. But rather let Christ's Spirit live uncontested in us and transform us by living his life through our spirit. In other words, from the inside out. In a sentence, the spirit finds his true resting place in Christ and those in Christ. A lot to think about there.